Hello, everybody, and welcome to episode 170 of Trials and Trebuchets. I'm your dungeon master, Luke, and joining me are my players whose names are... Hello, my name is Ben, and I play level 9 gnome wizard, Winsler Wallaby, along with cuddly cat, Mr. Wiggles. No. <laughs> Hello, I'm Carla. The brain to the level 9 tiefling roguelock integrity I Adelberry. Winter is coming, and we know oh. the beasties are coming with it. <laughs> Hello, my name is Sarah. I play level 9 half oh elf bard Mira Marchand. And it's time for a super cool sleigh ride where we're totally not going to get attacked. Nothing to worry about here. No, 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 no. Hi, my name's Sam. And I played the level nine human sorcerer, Sarah F. Sinderman. And I would like to now put in my application to be one of the kennel workers to hang out with these big doggies. <laughs> Doggy. And last time on Trials and Trebuchets, Serenep Sinderman quickly found solace with the idol Berries in Dry Falls. And then, after a small montage, the students, four of them, said farewells to their families for the year before departing for their Crow Mercantile internships in Troil. Far, far in the north, the four students and a limp Angelica ran back into Kurt or Lane and met with uh, Great, the kennel keeper, a giant who controlled the sled to Troil. They then packed in like cozy little sausages in a container and shipped off towards the Crow Mercantile town. We pick up on the sled ride. These gray uh, renders, these large, uh, strong, woolly little creatures uh, are pushing and pulling this sled as hard as their frames can take. Uh, it's quite a bit of weight. Uh, the giant grate on the back uh, steering it contributes a lot to that mass, uh, as well as the cargo stored on the sled itself, uh, both things that are being shipped to Troil, uh, as well as you students. The wind around you is howling, and the snow is fairly fluffy and coming down almost sideways. Uh, the darkness expands outwards, but you do. There is like this illuminance that almost, uh, almost as if any light that is coming from the sky above, like the 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 covered moon or whatever might be up there, uh, is reflecting very nicely off of the pure white ice field and tundra esque landscape in front of you. Uh, Behind you, where that structure you had left from was, there was assorted trees, but now, probably about an hour and a half into this three-hour journey, there is nothing to speak of. As you sit here and watch out, uh, you see that occasionally there's patches of thinner ice. There is a, there's crumbling and cracking coming from nearby, little pops and uh, shudders as the ice shifts underneath the weight of the sled, zooming over the top of it. As you're all sitting here, in your wonderful, cozy little winter clothes, which you described last episode, the giant, uh, just shy of 20 feet tall and just as wide, with his big furs and now a pulled-on fur cap itself, shaggy-ish black beard, will kind of lean over, uh, sheltering himself a bit in the from the wind and kind of making himself a smaller footprint and will uh, try to make conversation with you all uh, starting with wonderful icebreakers such as so where are you from what are you what how what are you doing up here what what are you planning on doing is this you you're gonna work for Crow mercantile f for like ever uh <laughs> no I think I think our deal is just temporary I think we're only gonna be here for a little bit but yeah, like two weeks. Yeah. Oh, yeah. okay, okay, okay. We're just like interns, so just whatever that interns. means. Yeah, okay, we'll you're be probably going... just getting grunt work and stuff like that then. Well, not exactly in my, my and Kurt's case. Um, we got some important stuff that we're going to be having to explain to everybody there, so we're probably going to be hosting a seminar, I wow. would assume. Wow! Okay, that's pretty official, Sad. That doesn't sound like regular intern stuff to me. What What about the rest of you? You all, all, all of you also, like, real important and, like, 
gonna put on seminars, teach people things, and make thinking happen? <laughs> I don't know what my purpose is yet. <sighs> Same. I'm Oof. just wow. going to work and help out, yeah. This is heavy. All right. Well, okay. That's heavy stuff. I hope that <laughs> you're young, so hope's still there to find a road. There are lots of roads. There's an old giant proverb that goes, there's a lot of roads and a lot of footsteps. That's uh, the... That's, that's, that's it? That's it. Very right. open-ended. Giant proverbs, very open-ended, up to interpretation. So uh, I interpret that to mean you'll find something. Just walk around and you'll find a door that you like and go through it and stay there. Oh, Did he well, just say a door? Oh, I don't like this. <laughs> uh, what's what's Troil, um like? Like how, I mean, I know it's cold up here, but kind mm. of how would you describe it? Because he just sort of came in blind. Okay, yeah. In a word, I would call it cold. Not, well, that's a funny word to use. Not temperature-wise. It's just a lot of people who are there for very specific things. Not a lot of people there to chat. I had my, like, the uh, kennel assistant. That was a nice ch person to chat to. But now it's just me and the greys now that he's gone. Uh, so it's kind of just, you get in, do your job, get paid. Most people are just trying to get paid, make a name for themselves, make a thing that uh, Mr. Ose will really like, uh, so he'll buy it off them, pay them a lot of money, and they can go back down on the south. They're not built for this weather, you know? So everyone working there just works for Headmaster Crow? Well, I mean, it's the it's Crow Mercantile. I mean, there's I don't know the exact hierarchy that you're working with. I work in the kennels, which it proportionally... It is at the bottom, but is quite important because I keep everything. Any, I keep everyone inside safe, you know. So, and I get people to and fro. So without me, the whole thing crumbles. But without Crow, the whole thing crumbles. Without everyone, the whole thing crumbles. So it's really just an interconnected big mesh of people supporting people, but getting along in a professional sense. So is it more like an actual like work site than it is an actual town? Do, do people actually, like, live there that are actually from there, or is it just oh. people who come in? Oh, well, there's a lot of giants who live there, so we're from there, but other than that, it's people who come up to work there, and they'll work maybe one, two, ten, twenty years, and, well, it hasn't been twenty years yet, but you you understand my meaning, and then presumably someone will work there for twenty years when... Chrome Mercantile has been around for 20 years, and then I'll head back down south once they've gotten their fill of the cold. I myself am partial. I don't think I'll ever be leaving so long as life's in my blood, you know? Uh, the North just calls to me. I, this is my place. This is my people. It just speaks to me, you know, on a transcendent kind of level, you know? You ever spend the night out under the stars in the tundra in the winter and the storms? It's a different type of feeling, you know? You wake up a different kind of numb. Not the, not the numb you feel when you're tired and overworked in a northern town, but the numb of just living. I don't know if I can relate. <laughs> Man, we're just going deeper and deeper. That sounds very existential. Yeah, that's what goes on when you don't have anyone to chat to up here. But you all have each other, and provided that, you know, you don't come to despise one another in the weeks, two weeks that you'll be up here, I'm sure you can keep each other lots of company. I, I don't know why we would despise each other. We're all, like, school friends, so yeah. oh. no worries there. Okay, I'm just covering my bases, you know? Some people come up here not super socialized, don't want to speak to anyone, don't want to look anyone in the eyes kind of thing. So, you know, it's actually nice to get a nice conversation in. Normally, it's just quiet for three hours. I'm alone with my thoughts, as usual. Uh, but this is nice. I'm getting you... some really confused vibes from this guy. I'll be honest. So, um, how long have you been working with the Greys? Oh, well, well, ever since I was a kid, I worked with the Greys. My dad before me and his grandpappy before him raised them, so just kind of naturally came to me. It's in my blood. Uh, and they smell that. They respect that. Um, so ever since I was a, a wee little guy, probably when I was like five feet tall, started working with them, uh, which is a bit scary at that age, but you grow into it. Uh, and then uh, Mr. Osei moved on in, uh, got the, the got the town bustling again, and, uh, well, work picked up, so I got to stick around, and it's been nice. It's been excellent. How long ago was that? Uh, about 14 years. Oh, shit. Yeah. I thought he was, like, really young. He's reasonably young. He came in, he was probably, he was just a, I don't want to speak, he's an industrious young man. So he came in, a young guy, 
big ideas, lots of money, don't know where that came from, and started putting out good things to the world, doing great, um, as much as I can tell. Interesting. Hmm. I mean, that's cool. Yeah, it's amazing. So, uh, where are you from? What, what, what brings you to this northernly section? I mean, oh, buddy over here, little guy, got that whole seminar speaking gig, but the rest of you just happen to fall into this stuff, or what's going on? Well, um, we all go to school together, so... Okay, that's fun, that's cool, that's great. Yeah, so um, we all sort of were given the offer kind of together. I mean, like, obviously, and I gesture over to Winslow and Kirk, like, mm-hmm. they have a big reason to be here. Um, We are kind of here to, you know, help out. Like, the invitation was extended to us mm. to, you know, kind of... What a, what a kind um, guy that Mr. Crow, or Mr. Ose is. Just a big heart on him. Um, I don't know if we're going to be given, like, specific roles, Um, but... If you are okay with it, could I work with you in the kennels? Ah, uh, if there's not really anything else that you've been assigned to do, I'm sure you could maneuver your way into the position of helping me out. Uh, an extra hand's always appreciated, but it is a dangerous position. Uh, I won't lie, they get a bit rowdy sometimes. I just kind of like, she's just like kind of staring at the, at the, at the grays running forward and she's like i don't know it's just like giant dogs even though she knows they're not dogs she's like yes wonderful wonderful so in this time uh, following this loud conversation had over bristling winds and speedy travel on a sled could you all please make for me perception checks (laughs) oh boy here we go something hits under the thing oh you're all Uh, dead oh no Yep. Ooh, 11 plus 8. I got a 19. Um, So I rolled a 3, and I have a plus 4 to perception. So Mir is probably just watching over Angelica and not yeah. really uh, looking <laughs> looking out. Uh, God. I got a 15 plus 2, 17. Okay, okay. 22. Dang. Yeah. Wizard Wallaby, level 9 wizard. The one who can barely see two feet <laughs> in front of his face. Don't worry, just because the the... the your glasses have been hindered means that your other senses have expanded. Galaxy brain senses. Galaxy, Galaxy brain senses. Brain senses. What did Integrity Idleberry get? 19. 11 plus 8. Oh, so you all, except Mira, did fairly decently. <laughs> Interesting. So, Winsler Wallaby, Serenup Cinderman, and Integrity Idleberry, you are paying attention to your external area right the 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 ice field beyond the sled mira marchand your thoughts are uh, remnant or remain with angelica lindman constantly checking up to see if she is still in fact attached to the sled and still here uh, and not in fact freezing or something of the sort uh and ergo as you said you do not notice jack shit which is happening outside the sled the rest of you about 40 meters west or to the left of the this fun little sled you're on, you notice that there seems to be some mighty shaking of ice. Cracking, popping, snapping, uh, and it begins to raise up from the surface. And Uh-oh. it looks like it almost stands up with these two little... You know what a crane's legs look like? Like the bird? Like Sticks. those long, <laughs> sticky, spindly legs? Like this big block of ice almost stands up like that, gives itself a little shake, and then will begin to like... Just walk a, a, away from the sled in general. Uh, as you watch, you notice like six or seven other uh, moments like this where these big floats of ice will just crack and separate from the ice and stand up with these big legs and start walking away from the area. Mm. Winsler, you rolled, what, a 20-something? 22. 22. You uh, notice that and then decide to look over to the east as you hear a bit more popping and cracking coming from that direction over to your right and notice that there seems to be a big crack in the ice that seems to be forming and heading towards you and towards the sled in general. Uh, Almost like something is, you very distinctly I think can perceive that, it's almost like something is under the ice and crack, 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 breaking the ice and heading for you and the sled and those other little ice float crane things seem to be getting up and leaving, uh, sensing this. Um, great, great. 
Um, yeah, what can I do you for? Want to talk uh, some more? No, the the ice is cracking over by to our east, to the right, and it looks like something is heading this way, maybe. He will turn his head hastily and squint against the wind and curse heavily under his breath in giant uh, and just absolutely... Uh, he pull or he uh sends out a quick flick on the reins towards those gray renders lashed at the front of the sled as an attempt to make them go faster and you'll say yep good eyes it looks like a beastie coming for us uh if you can help i'd love the help uh um, i would love to enter into what i would like to call a wonderful skill check oh no skill challenge or skill <laughs> thank you sarah i always oh, call them no. skill checks i would like to enter into a wonderful skill challenge uh, we will take the order that, or we, we can take the order of the perception checks if you want, just to cut, or if you wanted to roll initiative. We can always roll initiative. Oh. Let's roll initiative to okay. initiative see who acts fun. first. <laughs> ah! <laughs> well, <gasps> Mira may not have noticed the initial <laughs> thing, but yeah. I did get a natural 20. Oh! Plus my initiative bonus, which is two, so that's 22. I Wonderful. I got a nat 20, um, plus three, so 23. <laughs> Okay. Nice. Yes. Wow, wasting them, folks. Perfect. Keep it up. <laughs> uh, integrity, Winsler. I got twelve. Okay. Damn. <laughs> I got six. Oh. 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 <laughs> isn't your bonus to? In, isn't your bonus like plus four or something? For initiative, I got Fire. plus three and I rolled three. <laughs> oh no. Okay. Uh -oh. Perfect. Uh, wah, in wah. that case. Let's start off with Serenepth Cinderman. What action and s or skill would you like to use to aid the sled in escaping this situation or to prevent this beastie from uh, absolutely colliding with the sled? Okay, so I would like to cast a spell called okay. Dominate Beast. Oh, Ooh. interesting. Perfect. Tell me what that does. Uh, you attempt to beguile a beast that you can see within range, which is 60 feet. Is it within mm. that space? You can see where it's cracking the ice, but it has not yet emerged from under the ice yet. So okay. you cannot see it. You can see essentially where it is burrowing and cracking the ice above it. Okay. In that so. case, I will instead... And let me know if this is possible or not, because I'm just kind Absolutely. of... Absolutely. If I cast invisibility on mm. the... At, like, fifth level instead of second mm -hmm. to try and make, like, the, I don't know, like, as much of us invisible as possible, maybe to, like, guide it off its track, guide, mm -hmm. guide it off of us. I think you can make only creatures invisible with the spell invisibility. Oh, dang it. That's true, yes. That is true. <sighs> Unfortunately, the sled would remain visible, you could proceed with that course of action in hopes that if it doesn't see anything there, it would just give up the goat. I'm going off shark rules. It thinks that we're a seal or something like that. If we make the shape different, it won't think we're a seal anymore. Absolutely. Feel free to make make an arcana check for me to see how successful that is. Oh, no. Okay. Uh-oh. Arcana's pretty good. So. <laughs> That's another nat 20. Ooh. Plus six, so 26. So, how many creatures can you make invisible with a fifth fifth level invisibility spell? <laughs> At second level, it is mm -hmm. a creature that I touch. So, it's only okay. one. So, with each level up, um, you can target one additional creature. So, I think my plan here is because we're all inside the, the, um, the sled mm -hmm. is to try and make the greys pulling us invisible mm, in the hopes to like change the shape enough sure uh so in that case we see serenap kind of go out and crawl forwards on this like wooden uh kind of like harness system or like what the things are what the gray grays are actually slashed to and just like touch each of them on the back they do not super enjoy that and are quite shocked but are running very hard so they don't retaliate in any way okay. and so you can cr make these invisible so now it appears to be a big old sled being pulled by absolutely nothing which is very interesting and exciting <laughs> um up next mira marchand Okay. What would you like to do? Yeah. To aid? I'm going to dig through my bag and I would like to make a case for this either being performance or persuasion. Ooh. I okay. am going to reach for an item I rarely use, but I do have called my mute flute. 
and oh. I am going to try to play a calming melody and attempt to either cast sleep on it or at the very least relax it a little bit, make it feel calm, make it feel less inclined to attack us. Make a performance check in that case. Okay. Uh, so I rolled an eight plus 13. Plus a thousand. Oh so that's God. 21, I think. Okay. What does, so you pull this flute out from your bag and begin to play it. It's very cold in this weather. Mm -hmm. uh, and since you're not casting the spell silence with it, it does in fact make actual real noise. What, what does the melody you play? Is it just like lullaby vibes? Yeah, I imagine it's a lullaby. Okay. okay. But it's like so, a lullaby in the very high register of my flute because mm -hmm. I understand that this is probably a creature that can hear high pitches. Cool. Very cool. It blows with the wind over towards this uh, beastie cracking the ice. And you see that it slows its pace substantially as you do this, uh, as you all gain another success. Oh, boy. Winsler Wallaby. Oh, uh, your your, um, your classmates are succeeding and excelling at what they're doing. What do you want to do? I don't know if I can really do anything. Got to try something. Um... Let's see, what could I do? I mean, the only thing that I could think of would be like maybe casting fog cloud. Interesting. But it would only be within like twenty feet and I feel like it would mm. be like a twenty foot radius and it you wouldn't could last long enough. Interesting. You can try making try using you could use skills to gain information about what this creature might be in order to like inform what actions you might want to take. Is that a thing okay. you'd be interested in? I could pro in? I I will probably sort of like see how it's moving. Mm, mm -hmm. Okay. Like perfect. see how it's moving, how fast it's moving. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And, and see what should we be doing or what could be done. And like, yeah. Oh, yeah. Make a nature check for me. <laughs> no. <laughs> uh, no. That's uh, a 10. Ooh. So that is a failure. Um, Why is my dice failing me now? <laughs> Winsler, you assume this to be some sort of whale or something. Uh, so <laughs> if only I don't even you. Know what a whale is. <laughs> <laughs> you learned Magic about them. In the, uh, you learned about them in zoology, in not what the class? other one. <laughs> I almost said it again for the second episode oh in a row. Oh my god! Uh, so you learned about them in uh, <laughs> zoology and uh, whales, Winsler. You know, like to like poke up through the ice sometimes to breathe. So it might not even be that malicious, and you probably. Oh I shouldn't be too concerned. Integrity Possibly. Idle, integrity Idleberry. Yes. How are you liking to help, please? Um, I would like to use my thaumaturgy, thaumaturgy cantrip in mm. order to create um, a very scary sound um, that I believe might scare them off. Yeah. Um, I'm thinking maybe the cry because, okay, here's my... Um, thought process yeah so great said that they look like really large caterpillars centipedes so oh centipedes so i'm like okay what are centipedes scared of birds and clearly we know that there are big birds so i would <laughs> like um a yeah. cry of a raven mm. to scare them scare them off and okay. i believe this would either either be intimidation or persuasion Please make an or deception oh but you're trying to scare them off. Make an intimidation roll for me. Okay. Buffalo check, please. Buffalo. <laughs> As Integrity uses her cantrip to make big bird noise. <laughs> I love it. Ah! How does an 18 work? Oh, an 16 18. plus 2. An 18 is just dandy. So what does the sound l sound like in that case, Integrity Idleberry? Give us your best approximation of what this thunderous bird sound, this predator of the Arctic, what sound does it make? It goes... And it's wow. Like <laughs> <laughs> so it makes that sound. You all perceive this beastie coming at a slower pace behind now the sled as the sled is carried on and it was almost come into your uh, the wake of the sled and is following behind you this bird noise emits loudly and very to your ears uh, sounding like just a magical effect but the beastie seems to stop and you see the ice begin to stop being pushed around almost as if it has stopped in its tracks or just gone deep below the ice once more. Hmm. Meaning, you all have successfully 
since you've gotten three successes on this easy skill challenge, you've successfully avoided the conflict at hand. Uh, and this sled carries on uh, forwards, being pulled by invisible gray renders uh, across the ice. A great will kind of look over his shoulder when he realizes that the threat has passed slightly uh, and then y- y- kind of yell out and say, Wow, that was absolutely amazing. The other workers I bring with me normally don't help a fucking lick, so <laughs> absolutely amazing. Thank you all so much. Oh, it's really nothing. I mean, we, d- we definitely take the initiative when stuff like this happens. <laughs> I didn't even sweat. <laughs> I think if you did, it would probably freeze. Like It freeze would absolutely on your body. freeze, yeah. Ooh, if that happens, like let's say that you sweat on your armpits, will you not be able to lift your arm up? You'd be frozen solid within the minute, yeah. It happens oh, to people a lot, actually. That's scary. Anyway, stay inside the fucking... I shouldn't be cussing so much. <laughs> Anyways, stay inside the sled so that you don't fall out in case it just comes back and just bashes us from under the ice, okay? Just keep keep yourselves inside and careful, okay? Just All move right, on. I got my, move I got on my seat belt. Yeah, just How rope yourself in, why don't you? Sure. How much longer? Probably an hour. Who's to say? Oh. Maybe in the next 12 seconds, there'll be a time skip where we're just there. But, you know. That'd be really narratively convenient. What's a time what skip about? <laughs> and so, the rest of your journey <laughs> passes, luckily, uneventfully. You do see more of those little ice flows stand up and walk around. You see one of them stand up and almost, like, stretch out. And you do see an icy neck emerge from it. It's seeming to be some sort of uh, large bird mimicking the ice, natural ice state. Uh, and a couple of them take flight and fly off into the storm. Uh, but you don't see any more beasties creeping up from underneath the ice to come attack you, luckily. And after some time, you begin to see on the horizon a small what looks like a um, pile of snow uh, that has light faintly coming from the top of it, right? Like a small hill off on the horizon out in the middle of this ice. And as Great drives and controls the sled and you approach closer and closer and closer, uh, it grows in size and eventually you see large front gates uh, upon them, very ornate carvings uh, done very obviously by skilled crafts, uh, p- like skilled c- uh, carvers of a sort. Uh, they look ancient and somewhat eroded from the wind and snow grinding them down. Uh, as you begin to approach and they loom high above, the gates start to, they kind of shudder and start to pull upwards, uh, allowing just enough headspace for you all to come in on the sled into a small, what looks like almost paddock kennel area. Inside, when the gates fall with a crash behind you, uh, it seems that this is some sort, there, it seems to be a stone interior and it seems that just snow has accumulated on top of this structure over immense periods of time, right? So it's almost this small stone keep here at the top of the world where it's just been buried in the snowbank almost. But looking upwards as you come in, it's just this grand entryway, and the ceiling, the the roof and ceiling is uh, completely transparent. There is no stone there but there is no snow falling from it. When those gates crash down behind you, the howling wind fades away and you feel a warmth come back to you. You feel that numbness and kind of heat, that tingling of blood rushing back into your fingers or running into your nose and all those things after being out in the cold for so long. Uh, You can all disembark uh, the uh, sled itself. There are doors exiting. Uh, There are doors going into the actual structure itself. And then this passageway continues to what looks like a big open courtyard to the to in front of you. There doesn't seem to be anyone out there. The the street is paved and well kept and it's not clean. Uh, It doesn't particularly evoke anything, but all this architecture is very it's a lot of straight lines. There's not really that many curves. Any like naturalness to the local environment seems to come from snow piling on top of things. Uh, And it seems to pile on top of things everywhere aside from on that ceiling where you can just see up into the beautiful night sky above. Uh, It almost looks as if the storm straight above of Troil itself has 
a small hole cut out so you can see through the clouds up into the beautiful stars. Mm. And it's, it's a particularly odd experience, almost if you have just run out from... It genuinely feels like the storm has passed in less than three seconds when you, as, upon your entry here. Uh, and as you are disembarking, uh, the uh, kennel keeper, great, will unlash himself from the sled itself and go over and start releasing the gray renders. You see him with two hands pick them up <laughs> one by one and place them into a small uh, iron cage nearby where there seems to be two or three other smaller gray renders who all uh, are like uh, scratching and rubbing themselves against the gray bars and just like Time for uppies. <laughs> generally very excited to see uh, the giant walk in once again. Uh, and nearby, standing uh, at the top of a staircase on the side of this room that leads to a uh, proportionally normal sized door, which is to say like an eight foot tall gr- kind of double door. There is a young man with a well-kept beard, nicely trimmed hair. Uh, you see uh, Crow, oh say Crow, Headmaster Crow standing nearby at the top of these stairs. He has like an attendant next to him. You do not recognize them. It is not Kenneth Horse Wrangler. And as you all disembark, he kind of yells out and will say, Welcome, everyone, to Troil. I hope that your journey was pleasant. Eventful. Eventful. It was definitely oh. cold. Well, I hope that the warmth of Troil will keep you nice and safe for the next two weeks. Um, you can leave your bags with the sled. People will see to bring it to your uh, lodging. If you don't mind, it's fairly late but I wanted to know if you would like to sit down with me and just talk over some things, uh, iron out the details before we just say goodnight for the evening and you all go to bed. You, there's no work to be done tonight, to be clear. Uh, yeah, that sounds good. All right, we can do wonderful, that. Wonderful, wonderful. Well, uh, in that case, follow me. I'll be your host this evening. Uh, and he will Thank kind of you. turn and go through those large set of double doors. The rest of you, uh, the five of you, specific can get off the sled and go up those stairs. Uh, Mira, Mm -hmm. are you going to leave Angelica here? She has luggage. Yes. Yes, I will. (laughs) Okay, wonderful. But I'm going to like look at whoever is going to be moving the bags and like sort of be like, okay, just make sure that she keeps that blanket on and is safe in the room. The attendant who was next to Crow has descended the stairs and walked over. They have a one of those, uh, like a big trolley of sorts that they're going to load luggage on and they seem to look at you hesitantly and they will say is that a person um <laughs> yes i'm keeping her safe on orders of Allah algram lady of the woods so be very careful with her and they look around <laughs> as if someone <laughs> more important than them is supposed to be handling this task <laughs> they're probably a like 17 year old kid <laughs> oh my god uh, oh, and, and they'll go like uh, of course i would of, of course i'll handle it with the utmost care uh have, thank you so much good- Absolutely. Have a good time eating. <laughs> and they like are now in a bit of a yeah. frenzy as you leave them, uh, Mira. So the four of you, along with Kurt or Lane in his brand new fur jacket, fur <laughs> coat, some might call it, follow along quickly behind Crow. You walk through these halls. Uh, it's almost like there is a main large hall or a main large room, and then a smaller walkway uh, up on the sides of the walls where people who are not uh, 19 plus feet tall can walk without fear of being crushed. Uh, As you walk, um, you see many giants uh, dressed in much nicer clothes than Great was dressed in, like much more refined robes with like the crow mercantile emblem like proudly upon the chest, like pushing giant trolleys covered in things. Um, I think of particular note, uh, which is uh, interesting here in the far north, there is a, a hallway where there's these two giants pushing uh, a large cart that has three hulls of a ship on it. Uh, they look Ooh. to be very similarly made, almost like carbon copies of one another, uh, and uh, are being, it's like this dark, dark wood color. It's the Agolius. It's the Agolius. They found oh my it. Gosh. Oh, no. <laughs> but these three brand new hulls of sailing ships being pushed on trolleys through the hallways off to some workshop or another. Again, this same feature that you saw in the entryway where the ceiling is just like this clear material uh, where you can see the sky above. 
is here and it's, it's it's nice it feels like you're out in the open in just a regular open space and you're not compressed in these stone walls uh but without having to deal with all that weather hmm. nonetheless crow uh walking slow enough for you all to catch up will lead you um I think he might gesture towards those ships being pushed along the hallway before. Like, he stops at a doorway here in the hallway. Uh, it's nice. It's small, uh, regular, height-sized. Uh, he'll point at those ship halls, though, and he'll say, uh, those three or four, a very interesting project that's ongoing. Uh, it's free to work on if any of you are quite interested or have the aptitude for it while you're here. But we can talk about that at Over Coffee that's in here and he'll push open the door you can all see a very cozy looking study of a sort uh big leather chairs a roaring fireplace uh and that same kind of glassy ceiling texture and he'll say uh, after you and we can begin to unwind and discuss things before i send you off to your lodgings for the night uh, very well okay very well you all enter. You can take seats. There is a large pot of tea on a central table that you can yourself pour a cup of if you would like to do so. Uh, Crow will sit and not drink. He's wearing a thicker robe than he normally wears at Wildcliffe. He wear, it's still that same gray and black coloring with a big crow emblem, uh, but these seem to be fur-lined of a sort. And he will sit in one of these chairs and cross his legs. As you look around the room, uh, the glassy uh, material making up the roof, uh, you start to see small etchings in it, but... I don't know, unless you wanted to look further, it doesn't really catch your eye that much. Uh, and he'll set, he'll recline slightly and say, So I welcome you uh, warmly to Troil. I hope that you will enjoy your stay here. Uh, there was a few matters to go over before I sent you off to get your uh, welcome packages in, in your suite that you'll be staying in. Uh, first and foremost, Mr. Uh, Wallaby and Mr. Orlane, uh, there will be you will be running Gollum seminars, uh, construction seminars, and working our top artificers on how to assemble these clockwork golems for uh, the duration of your stay here. That can begin uh, tomorrow afternoon, though, so no large rush on it. They uh, understand that you're new here and need the orientation of the place first before you get straight down to work. Alrighty, like that that works for us. Wonderful. And before that goes, tonight, is there anything I can do to have things prepared for you? Is there anything you require or would want set up in order to make things as easy as possible? Uh, is there, like, some sort of auditorium building? Or, like, is there, like, an area where one can go up and present? Like, a slideshow or something like that? Absolutely. We have the... Uh, <laughs> There's an old lecture hall. It might be a bit oversized. It was constructed by the Giants for Giants, but I'm sure we could <laughs> make it work. All right, I, that, that could work. I feel like, you know, for the for a first little bit, it could probably be pretty useful in, like, detailing mm. some things, you know, with yes, diagrams absolutely. that absolutely. we have. And then, and then moving on to working on the actual items themselves and overseeing them in the workshops, I assume. Yeah. Wonderful. Now, as for the rest of you, First and foremost, Miss Saren up the Cinderman. How do you find yourself? Um, I he looks at you with a neutral face. That smile he had when speaking and addressing Winsler has faded quickly. I think he knows. Everybody fucking well, knows. Yeah, it's gonna be like the uh, biggest news story of the decade. Who doesn't know the scandal? <laughs> Given the fact that two of the crows arrived at the Idleberries, I am. I assume that you're aware of what recently took place. Mm. I didn't send the letters personally. That's a bit below my station. Uh, but I am aware of what took place. Yes. Um, does it affect my working here for the next couple of weeks? I don't think you find yourself in the Ashwin kingdom, uh, nor in the presence of any other uh, blooded nobility of the Ashwin kingdom. So unless I receive a letter asking for you to be sent back south, I see no problems with you being here. Okay. What inspired the choice, though? That's what I'm curious about. I overheard your conversation back at the gala of Frost's first chilling grasp and found it <laughs> laughable, but I didn't expect it to come to something like this. I had hoped to have a more diplomatic discussion when it came time to mm. making my feelings known about the whole thing, but mm. 
some circumstances came up, I had to save two people from doing something very stupid. And very quickly, things went south. Mm. A proper discussion was, there was no time to have it. And so I was then very promptly needing to escape the capital. As I'm sure happens to so many people. Uh, Do you happen to know if young Mr. Maisel will be attending uh, Wildcliff next year? Or in the coming spring? I have not received a letter as of yet. They do know where I am currently staying. And I have not received Mm. anything yet. But I hope that they reached their safe haven. Oh, I wish them uh, good fortunes in doing that. Nonetheless... The matter at hand, uh, the three of you, Miss Idleberry, Miss Marchand, and Miss Cinderman, are here because of your aptitude at the at Wildcliff. <laughs> Mira, do you actually? Yes. <laughs> yeah, okay. Um, <laughs> and he'll smile and he'll say, so I would encourage you uh, tomorrow or tonight if you have the energy for it to look around the city, the town, uh, the workshops, find things that you're interested in, and hop into the projects. I don't have anything uh, immediately that I've assigned to any of you, but I'm here to listen to your interests and aptitudes and recommend you anything you might want to work on. So we just get to pick and choose? Just based so on what's So long as here? you have the skills required to work... I see no reason to, why not to, as long as you are, in fact, working day to day. That would be the only caveat. I could tell you some of our interesting projects which are ongoing, if that might help get the ball rolling. Sure. I think that sure. would be perfectly helpful. Wonderful. Uh, currently in workshop A, uh, that has been set aside for Gollum research. So if you would like to assist your fellow students, or rather, you're not students while you're here, to be clear, you are under this uh, d- bubble uh, within Troil, you are employees of Crow Mercantile, to be clear. But if you were to be interested in helping with the Gollum seminars or building process, uh, that will be ongoing in Workshop A. And there will be, of course, the uh, seminars Mr. Wallaby and Mr. Orlane will be putting on. Uh, beyond that, Workshop B, there is a uh, current process of trying to uh, finagle the details of a certain storybook that we've been contracted to create a illusory component to and mass produce. Uh, that, if you have the uh, skills required, could be quite the place to go. It's very exciting. New problems crop up every day. Uh, beyond that, there's been some talk with uh, keeping those beasts that brought you here and bringing them or giving them a bit more grace so that they might be able to behave themselves in uh, cities, urban areas. There have been quite a few uh, of my associates who have visited the city and thought and uh, voiced to me that they'd like to have a gray render themselves to keep in, in, in their own homes. Uh, but I don't think they currently have the aptitude for that. Uh, the, the kennel keeper and a few other uh, workers here have been working on a process to render them more gentle, I'll say. <laughs> Further, there's been, I don't know if you've noticed, and he'll point to the glassy ceiling structure, and he'll say, but this is a new material that's been being worked on uh, here recently, a uh, living glass of some sort. It's malleable, uh, similar to if you've ever worked with a soft metal, uh, but just as beautiful. Uh, There is a problem right now of it cracking and smashing itself to bits, however. Uh, So that is being worked through. That project's ongoing for a few years now. And finally, uh, the ships that I mentioned. Uh, They're currently trying to find ballast in order to keep them afloat uh, in the air. Uh, But that project has been in the works for seven years and hasn't gained any substantial ground, so I don't strongly recommend it. Beyond that, there's smaller ones sitted around in uh, workshops here and there. Uh, I'm sure if you find any artificers loitering around, they'd be happy to tell you about their personal pet projects. Uh, but who wants to talk to them, really? There's a lot of a lot of project <laughs> going on around here. Of course, it's the uh, this is the epicenter of innovation and progress, uh, and so a lot of high and and very secretive projects are ongoing. 
Uh, there are, I must say, projects that the four of you, the five of you, Mr. Orlane, uh, cannot know about while you're here. So if you do encounter some such locked door as that, please, I know it might be in your instinct to peek on through, but I would ask you or instruct you as employees not to do so. Yeah, that's, right. that's fine. I'll, I'll probably be checking out Workshop B anyway, so. Oh, wonderful, wonderful. I'm sure you're, you'll find many like-minded souls there. Sips tea. Yeah. He <laughs> Loudly. Takes, he leans back and takes a big sip of his tea. Winsler, you can sip yours also loudly. Uh, maybe looking up and examining now what you can perceive as all those hundreds of little cracks in the glass uh. ceiling above you that is just like, now that you know it's there and possible of just shattering into bits at any moment, uh, you know, nonetheless. So, did you have any specific questions for me before I let you go? Um, no, no, no offense. I, I, I don't mean this in a bad way or anything, but if you didn't have specific projects you wanted each of us to work on, I mean, I get why you hired Winsler and Kurt, mm -hmm. but is there sort of a, a reason you asked us to come mm. up here? I'm not complaining. This is great. I'm, I'm just curious. It's a good curiosity. And that is exactly the reason why I had interest in Wildcliff in the first place and why you as students are so fascinating to me. You all possess such great aptitudes compared to normal workers. You might find that when, while you walk around these uh, halls that you might, although be interns here, you are likely on the, a similar skill level to those around you. And so being a headmaster puts me in an interesting crux where I have access to all of these highly skilled students uh, who are in need of money, who have very specialized skills, some of who might not be very keen on staying over the winter and working with their mentors or professors on research, or when they graduate, might not be very keen on uh, continuing their studies at the school. Instead of just sending them out into the wider world without any place to go and spend that curiosity and uh, aptitude and skill that they've gathered at Wildcliff, I thought that it might be in everyone's interests to begin bringing students here. So you are essentially the first experimental crop of Wildcliff students come to work here while you are students. I just want to see if this is a system which works before making it any stricter. Okay, that makes sense. Well, we'll I'll do our best, I'm sure. Yes, I'm, I'm very excited to see what you're able to figure out. And if you happen to have any exciting new ideas while you're here, don't hesitate a moment to share them with each other or with me or with any of the other workers that you might interact with. Everyone here is pulling for the same team. And Winsler, Kurt kind of leans over in his chair and like elbows you and like, he goes like, that's what I'm saying. Like he wants us, he wants us to give him stuff. Yeah, yeah I, I, I know, but I guess just don't like, I don't know, find, find time to like show him your stuff, but don't like, not in the middle of what we're trying to do tomorrow, okay? <sighs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like during dinner or something. Try, yeah. not, try not to go like crazy and try I'm and not introduce gonna five go things crazy. at once. That's not something I would do. I just... Hurt have... you hardly ever sleep. That's not a problem here. It's always night. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Winsler, you put your face uh. in your... Your palm in your face. Uh, and Crow will lean back and will kind of say... And while you're exploring, you might even learn history lessons. The giants are local to the town and could teach you a thing or two about... This city, I think it has a few small little secrets still remaining uh, that we haven't really found since we've been here, but nothing major, nothing exciting like at Wildcliff, I'm sure. Sure. <laughs> hmm. And he pauses for a mighty amount of time, almost trying to will into existence any form of, like, you all kind of adding on to that. Like, oh, here's a story of a secret at Wildcliff, something like that. And he'll just sit there and wait for it. Integrity is like staring away. I'm just looking mm. away. Looking up, looking to the ground and just sipping my tea. 
<laughs> yeah, Mira too, but she's kind of like tapping at the side of her leg like a little anxiously because like, uh, school secrets. <laughs> Don't like yeah. this topic of conversation. <laughs> yeah. Sort of like darting eyes back and forth, pouring another cup of tea. <laughs> mm. Mm-hmm. But I'm sure none of you would know anything about those. Absolutely not. No. Absolutely <laughs> not. Well. What? <laughs> well, I mean, you know, the whole uh, Ublex situation, that was a large thing that took place. Yeah, there was of that. Course. Yeah. Yes. Yes, that was a great time. Yeah, I completely forgot about that because we never really that, do anything. That, I also don't, don't know, know if that classifies as a good time. Uh, but it was an interesting secret. That was that, like, we didn't really know Nublex was of there course. until, you know, it started doing stuff. Yeah. That's, I so, think, how the year went by. Things just started happening, and then the four of you fell into. Sorry to exclude you, Mr. Orlane. I know you were involved with the uh, sewer situation as well, but in less of an active role. Nonetheless, it's no matter for discussion right now. We're far, far from that school. So unless there's anything further to discuss, which I have nothing to speak of with the rest of you at the current moment, I'll say once more, welcome to Troil. I hope your stay is illuminating for you all. Uh, If you follow the walkways outside, uh, just above workshop D... There should be a small suite. Your luggage should be already prepared. And there should be some welcome baskets for you as well if you'd like to uh, accept a few gifts on our behalf. Oh, what are we getting? Well, it's a wonderful little surprise. I'm uh, expecting That's what my fresh. mom said because she brought me like a birthday packet and she's like, you can't open it until your birthday. So I'm, oh. maybe I should save this one. I don't know. Maybe. Oh, my uh, mom did the... too. Wait, what? Yeah, my mom gave me a birthday packet for my birthday. Wait, wait, wait. Like, wait, when's your birthday? Didn't we have this conversation before? No? Not in character. What, what's going on? Uh, The 28th of winter. <gasps> what? What? Integrity. That's my birthday. No, it's my birthday. <laughs> no, 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 no. We have the same birthday. We have the same birthday? We have the same birthday. More than one person can have a birthday on the same day. Yeah, but I've never met anyone who has the same birthday as me, and Integrity has the same birthday as me. I never really thought that anyone else would have that day. I thought it was only mine. Mm. Do you know what this means? What does... That means... Is it... We can celebrate it together. We can have, like, a joint birthday thing. Oh, my gosh. Can we have a big ball? <laughs> That's unlikely. I'll just step in on that one. You're free to celebrate in your own suite or if any of the other people that you're working with want to celebrate along with you. Uh, but please try to limit the interference your celebrations might have on the town at large. We get a suite? Yes, a suite. There should be a common living space and then rooms for all of you. Uh, very nice accommodations. Uh, just trying to show That's you the sweet. best we have to offer. I like that. That is sweet. <laughs> He blinks slowly, (laughs) and he'll say, very well. If you need me, my attendants can be found littered throughout the town, watching around the supervisors, the attendants themselves, the young man who brought your things to your rooms, uh, any of them. Just, if you need my ear, speak to them, and they'll find a way to get you to me. Have a good evening. Thank you. Thank you. you. Thanks. Good night. (laughs) And the... Five of you can get up from your chairs, uh, finish your tea, of course, get up from your chairs, and exit this very comfortable study room. You walk along high walkways through halls, past large workshops where you can, there's like, so the, the these walkways that you're all walking on, they don't go directly into each of the workshops. There's like extra doors to get in there that uh, you can peek through if you'd like, just excitedly walking by them. but you can proceed past workshop uh, F through E, uh, all the way to workshop D. You see there's a large, uh, in the center of the town, I guess, there's like a cylindrical tower of a sort that almost looks in in some manner divine or religious at all, although it is a bit crumpled and looks to be in ruins of a sort. Uh, And you don't see anyone as you do walk going into that. Uh, You don't really even see anyone out on the walkways either. Uh, Everyone seems to be in workshops at kind of workstations, large workbenches, 
continuously working on things or in small little clusters d deliberating how best to approach the next problem. Uh, you hear mm. many nerdy words thrown out and uh, little nerdy voices humming in the air. Uh, al alongside that, you do hear many deep voices and grunts in a harsh giant tongue uh, to accompany them. Nonetheless, you all proceed to workshop D. You can climb a set of wonderfully made uh, kind of very gently sloped stone stairs. You know the ones that are long and short rise. Uh, and it goes up to a small kind of attic space above this workshop uh, where you open a wooden door and find yourself in a very comfortable looking living situation, a living quarters. There's a round table, a big uh, on the side of the wall, there's a big cauldron with a fire pit underneath it where you might bubble stew if you're into that type of, type of thing. Uh, there's mm. five uh, doors around the edge of the room where bedrooms with big feather beds lie and uh, just huge closets. And there's a big old window at the far end of your room that has a brilliant view out into the ice field where you can just Ooh. see ice cracking, those big old uh, ice float birds standing up and walking around, giving a bit of a wiggle every now and again and taking flight. Uh, and on that little round table when you walk in, there's five lovely baskets, uh, wicker oh. baskets filled with goodies for you if you'd like Tree. to take a look. Ooh. Yes, Wonderful. what is it? So you Open. walk over uh, and immediately begin pulling at your wonderful gifts, your free uh, stuff. Swag. And your free swag, yeah. There's a big woolen cap that has the Crow Mercantile logo <laughs> upon it. <laughs> okay. Uh, there's a very heavy uh, orange jacket in here uh, that <laughs> looks to be to keep you safe if ever you find yourself outside of Troil itself. Uh, like, this is a very thick, long, like, to your... From, like it hangs down to past your knees kind of jacket, like a parka mm. of sorts. They are all very well tailored to fit you all. So, Winsler, yours is perfectly fit. It's uh, all of a foot long and <laughs> fits per comfortably, and the rest of you have similarly fitting ones. Uh, there is a big old pack of... There, there's a big pack of each uh, chocolates <gasps> and toffee, uh, all Ooh. of which are Crow Mercantile branded, uh, oh, as course. well as a large uh, bag of like gumdrops. Ooh, Ooh, so many snacks! So many snacks. Uh, additionally, there is a small employee handbook that has just a, the directions for stuff and a general map and layout of the entire town in case you get lost. Uh, it also has a bunch of bathrooms pointed out that you, looking at the map, did not see any of those bathrooms on your way here, but apparently they must exist somewhere. Um, <laughs> and finally, there is a... Hmm, how to describe it? It is a very precisely cut piece of stone that is very flat. It looks to be a piece of slate. Mm. Uh, and there is a small note which is attached to it that has kind of an explanation of what it is and it is a sending slate. <gasps> While you have these and are attuned to them, you can cast sending to anyone else who is attuned to it as well. So basically we get like a four-way group chat. You get a fun cool. group chat. Well, five-way oh, yeah. group chat. Five-way. It, it, it is distinctly phone-shaped, yes. So it is it essentially... Is. Sweet. <laughs> we all get work iPads. You get work iPads. <laughs> <laughs> it only um, runs and it's teams. Fairly, yeah, it's fairly hefty in your hand, and it feel, like it looks very thin, but if you were to bend it, it would feel a lot stronger than it lets on. Uh, but if you sat on it in your back pocket, maybe it would snap in half. Who oh. knows? Oh. So it's an iPhone. Is that everything? It's an iPhone. <laughs> That's everything. Well, it's yes. an iStone. I feel I am disappointed that they did us they decided that it is not useful to give us toiletries. Oh my goodness. Well, they'd be in the bathroom, wouldn't they? Yeah. Integrity. You Integrity makes this remark, and you see a sixth door appear in the wall. <laughs> and, uh, it's a bathroom. 
uh, if you want to go and check in there, there is five individual packs of uh, toothbrushes, chrome yes, tiles, toothbrush, toothpaste, uh, a big, a bunch of like face cloths that are like dark gray, which is a bad color for face cloths, and just generally like things to keep yourself fresh. The bathroom is immaculate, by the way, completely made of like beautiful chiseled stone. There's a fully functioning plumbing system operating in here that oh my God. seems like it was added after like after a lot of other stuff. It looks much newer than the rest of the stonework in Troil as general. Just it's less eroded, I guess. Uh, and it's a beautiful bathroom and even nicer than the ones you guys have at school, which are already very nice bathrooms. Wow. Additionally, all of your bags have been transported into your rooms. Mira, <laughs> yeah. if you were to walk into your room, you see Angelica Lindman laid very gently onto <laughs> your bed, in fact. Uh, and she om- it almost looks like someone went and got a additional blanket of a sort and has draped that over her. <laughs> and she's almost sat up at the head of the bed <laughs> with pillows under her lower back as if she's just sleeping and ha- or as if she was just sitting in bed and happened to drift off to sleep. Perfect. Mm-hmm. They took the request seriously. They took it very seriously. <laughs> yes. So, I guess I should ask, what do the rest what do you all want to do in your time? You don't have anything to do tonight uh, or until tomorrow afternoon really. So is there anything hmm. specific? Pretty much just review the golem notes and get everything perfect. all prepped. Perfect, perfect, perfect. You and Kurt can sit at the dinner table uh, for the rest of the night into like the morning and do so. The rest of you, what would you like to do? Serenep is going to, uh, I guess, take a moment and make some of the coffee and like mm. put, put like, a piece of the chocolate into the coffee mm, and wonderful. grab a little like novelet that she had packed with her just mm-hmm. to kind of like, just like read for the night, I guess. Like she doesn't really have Absolutely. anything else. Absolutely. What's I would about? Say that, yeah. What's it about and what is it called? Actually, you tell us what it's about and we can, we get to come up with the name. <laughs> um, It's, it's definitely a book that a lot of like the no, no, the noble like women like to read. Mm, like it's like mm-hmm. very like, <laughs> it's it's a lot of like deceit and like uh, oh, like mysterious damn. a mysterious like oh. person on a horse shows up and it's like yeah and it's oh, she just like it was just like um it, it's one of, it's like one of those like books you like pick up like at a magazine stand kind of thing like it's just like mm-hmm. a short read and she was like oh this looks perfect let's read that now absolutely what's the title of this book everyone else mm. it has to be one of those like pulpy ass titles yes behold exclamation mark the crown of deception is upon us exclamation mark yes. <laughs> I'm so glad <laughs> I was like you've got to have court or crown in there somewhere oh yeah <laughs> um perfect Saren up you uh, you relax not I wouldn't say they're like couches because I hesitate to say that it's definitely a stone slab with pillows upon it that you can lounge upon <laughs> Uh, it is lacking in comfort, but it looks very nice. It's stylish. <laughs> Integrity and Mira, what would you like to be doing? Mm. What I think I might be doing actually is kind of resting in my little area, and then I might mm-hmm. pull out like a quill and some paper, and with my mage hand, just like write a little letter to my family because I'm trying to turn over okay. a new leaf and be like, "Hey, wow. arrived in Troil. It's really cool here. Like." It's it's here's what it's like. Here's what our you know sled ride was. Just mm-hmm. a little a and little update. Is that just to your mother and father, or are you gonna send one to your siblings? At the moment, I'm just gonna uh-huh. write one to my mother and father. Okay, wonderful. And I'll ask you since you're in your little private area. I assume you brought your wonderful onboarding gifts in here, uh, mm-hmm. deposited them somewhere, and your two gifts that your parents gave you on upon leaving (laughs) Mm -hmm. they're just sitting there on this little desk in this well-kept room you're looking at them as you write do you want to open them it's taunting you i was going to peek but Uh since my mom was like hey i'll know if you peek i'm like (laughs) god damn it she will know if i peek (laughs) (laughs) yeah we see mira's hand reach out and hesitate and remember what her mother said remember the icy stare in her (laughs) eyes and then just retract the hand and like She'll know. She'll absolutely know. It's true. And integrity. Oh. Yeah, yeah. What's up? How private are our private areas? Uh, if you were to close the door, it is completely private. Okay. Um. So I'm going to walk into my pri- private area. Yes. 
close the door. Yes. And is there like a desk? Absolutely. Or... Okay. So I'm going to sit at the desk and yes. I'm going to pull up from my backpack the Book of Warlocks, oh. or at least pages from the Book of Warlocks. Integrity, from your bag, you pull loose pages from the master list of warlocks. You slap them down on your desk and can shuffle through them. Are you looking for your own specific page yes, of good I'm deeds? Yes, I'm looking for my own specific Wonderful. page of good deeds. We see integrity. We see that portrait of integrity looking very Captain Morgany with a cool leg up on the dock, uh, just looking altogether very cool and suave. What would you like to do? And I'm going to take my quill and write down, be the first year, or be part of the first years who won the very first Wait, what? No. <laughs> Integrity, you write you write all this and then scratch it out. <laughs> and it's uh... No, very wrong, very wrong. <laughs> and I try to think. It's the four hundred like what year did we win? Nine hundred? Nine fifty four? Nine hundred nine hundred fifty four the year nine fifty four. Autumn's okay. End dueling tournament. So I am going to write mm-hmm. be the champion of the nine hundred fifty fourth Autumn's and uh-huh. <laughs> dueling festival, and then I'm going to put like a line, yeah. and I'm going to say, "And we are first years, and no one has ever seen that, so we're really cool." <laughs> <laughs> okay, you write this. It glimmers as you write, and the ink dries absurdly quickly integrity into this paper and you sit there and reflect on it and are pleased with yourself i think (laughs) so and i should ask you at the same thing did you want to open the parcel your mother gave you the one that's just brown brown paper she didn't say she didn't give you a mirror kind of ultimatum of like don't fucking open this she was just like here you go Mm -hmm. I think considering that they are planning to have a birthday party Mm. and integrity absolutely loves Integrity is the kind of person where if she does not open a gift on her birthday, she's going to get, like, sad. <laughs> she loves opening oh. gifts on her birthday. Of course. So I think she's just going to feel it and try to guess what it is. Mm, you feel it. It feels like a... Give me an investigation check. That is an 8 plus 4. Mm. 12. It's definitely fabric, but it's pretty chunky. So you're uncertain. Hmm. That's... My mom got me pizza. <laughs> <laughs> Pe- okay. Integrity, you Pizza have- party in a package. Oh, Integrity, yeah. You have a moment. You have your moment of reprieve in your own private dorm or private room, and you all, everyone else in all of your own private dorms, hear Integrity through the walls go, "It must be pizza." Uh, to <laughs> yourself, you're not certain what that means, but you do hear. Like they packed one of those MRE like ready to eat things that they give to soldiers <laughs> or something. So Winsler and Kurt sit around cramming for their lecture tomorrow afternoon where they will instruct actual professionals on how to build crystal or uh sorry clockwork golems scary very scary kurt is sweating buckets he is terrified he wants to pull an all-nighter but i think you talk him out of it winsler yeah no all-nighter uh, in Serenup, you and Virgil can crawl onto your bed. The pets were brought here, to be clear, mm-hmm. easily. Uh, you and Virgil can crawl onto this small, very comfortable bed together. Uh, it's a bit squishy with the big boy on here. Uh, but after a long time, you can drift to sleep. Integrity, you write your uh, good deeds down in the good deed book and happy with yourself. And after a long day, you can just flop into bed ready to take on the challenges of tomorrow when they arise. And Mira Marchand, uh, there's a girl sleeping in your bed. Do you want to move her, just put her on the floor or something? Yeah, but I'll, um, I'll like some of the extra pillows that were for her, I will put mm. those behind okay. her just to give her that support. Just because it feels a bit dickish not to. I don't think she really <laughs> feels it, but, you know. Did you want to message her at all? Or are you going to leave that for tomorrow? Mm, yeah, I'll give her like a good night message. I think that would be not a bad idea. For some reason, I thought you were going to just say a goodnight kiss. My brain just (laughs) (laughs) autopiloted. The ship we didn't know was coming. It's okay to kiss the homies. It's okay to kiss the homies. It's a no, kiss for the homies. But I will like set her um her like pillows up and then I'll kind of mm-hmm. point and be like, Hey Angelica, so we're in Troyal now. Um you have a super nice setup here and everything's okay. You're still totally safe. I hope you're doing all right. Make a wisdom saving throw. Okay. <laughs> 
<laughs> oh no. Um, so that's a four plus zero. Oh, oh my no. god. And Mira dies, and we don't know until the morning. Okay. Oh, that's not bad at all. Take seven psychic damage. Okay, I have Ooh. a very Ouch. bad headache. Yeah, you, you your head rings as you hear Angelica whisper back. I think some it's I think something's really close to finding me. Mm. Um hmm. in that case, I might be like, okay, where are you hiding? What, what do you think what what do you mean? I I'm I'm under a bed. I don't I I haven't I haven't I haven't gotten out. I need to make another wisdom save. Yeah. 18 plus nothing. Okay. Take four psychic damage. Okay. Uh, she says, I, I so think 11. I'm hiding under a bed. I, uh, Mira. Mm-hmm. Mm, I think Mira might be like, I'm sorry. I, I, I wish I could help more. Just, just, just stay quiet. Stay hidden. We're, we're going to get through this break. We're going to get that potion that Delness is making. We're going to find some way to astral project, and we're going to find a way to get you out of there. You just need to stay quiet. You've got this. I believe in you. Uh, take six damage. Okay, so 17. Yeah. And she will reply and say, what if it finds me before then? Hmm. Angelica, you are so strong. You have been through so much. You've made it through everything so far. I believe you can make it through this. I wish I could help more, but I know I don't have to because you're super capable. It's not going to happen. We've got this. Make a persuasion check Ooh. on this one and take four psychic damage. Okay. <laughs> Uh, the roll is a 12 plus my mm. persuasion bonus, which is a nine. So 22. Okay. You hear a confident whimper come back. Uh, you, and for your context, Sarah, because we haven't role played every single one of these. Mm -hmm. There's some times that Angelica is fine and doesn't feel watched. And other times that she feels as though something is trying to find her. Uh, okay. She's always been underground, as she says, and is stuck in like uh, two hallways that are just filled with rooms. Okay. But she doesn't know how to get out. Okay, awesome. So, you say I think this. With that. Yes. Yeah. And you can get into bed, uh, rest your head, drink a lot of water, and just try to get some actual sleep. Yes. And I think drifting away to sleep is very nice here because if you just lie on your back, you can just look up and you just see the stars in general. You don't see the moon precisely, but you do see the light that it shines down on Troil itself. And the beds are comfortable. The temperature is perfect. And despite headaches and stress over what may be coming tomorrow, sleep is easy to attain. But once all of you are sleeping, the moon uh -huh. comes out from behind the clouds it was hiding behind and sits there in perfect view of Troil with these glass ceilings, uh, this glass roof allowing all that light to pour in on you, and this brilliant full moon shines down on all of you. I know where one, I know where two of your tattoos are, but Winsler and Serenup, do you recall, I think Serenup, yours was on your shoulder. Yep. Winsler, do you remember where you got a cat tattooed? Yeah, I'm pretty sure it was on, like, his right arm okay i would have, i think it's like on his right arm wonderful so we see as the full moon glows down at all of you sleeping gently integrity your neck that nine-tailed squirrel illuminates with a moonlight glow and begins to creep away from you off onto the sheets and then scurries through a crack in the wall mira marchand a half-finished uh, bird <laughs> on top of your left arm spiral flutters away and flies up and pokes its way out of your room. Additionally, another small figure in your room runs off of Angelica Lindman's a back hound. under uh, a hound, scurries out from inside of this room. Winsler, a cat pounces off of your arm, off into the shadows elsewhere, and staring up the Cinderman, a fox scampers its way slyly away from you. And in the morning when you wake up, you might notice that your tattoos are gone. But we can deal with that next time on Trials and Trebuchets. What the fuck? I'm going to tattoo my ass. Uh, Yay, my tattoo's gone. I'm a good boy again. When's the wallaby? <laughs> or Ben. <laughs> Hello. Ben, Hello. could you do the outro for us? Sure, I could do the outro. 
If you all enjoy this episode of Trials and Trebuchets, please leave a rating and review on our Apple Podcast page. We loved hearing from you, and we'd like to see what you have to yeah. say about the show. It helps us out a lot and see what we can improve upon. We also have social media pages for Twitter and Instagram at Trials and Trebs. You can check out up, uh, cool fan art there, yes. upcoming teasers for episodes. Lots of cool stuff can yeah. be found there. You can also find a link to our Discord server in the description below. Mm -hmm. uh, you can click that link and go there. Enter a world, <laughs> enter a world where you can chat with a bunch of a bunch of folks. Absolutely. Who also, are fans of the show. It's it's real nice. Uh, and for those who are feeling a little extra generous, we do have some options available for you. We have a Patreon oh, page where you can uh, become a patron to uh, to us and. Basically, there's we have a variety of tiers which can give you access to stuff such as DM notes, bloopers, mm -hmm. fun stuff like that, mm -hmm. and you might even be able to get a student NPC show up you on the show. Can. The other option is we have merch. Merch Merch. We <laughs> what? <laughs> we have our own uh, merch store which you can head to by following the link trebmerch.com. Trebmerch.com. Merch. We have a cool com? Nesca shirt there. We've got a bunch of stickers. It's really cute. Yeah. It's real nice. I it's like awesome. it. It's, it's cute. You should go check it out. Yeah. All good ways of supporting this show. Uh, thank you all my players for joining me on this evening. And thank you all my listeners for listening to us today. Uh, we'll see you next week with another episode of this show and more continuation on the things that we addressed in this episode. Until then, goodbye. Goodbye. Bye. Thank you.